No, no. Some urine doesn't have a gene. They can have a gene for toxin or they can have a gene for an enzyme. And some enzymes that bacteria have when you push them are really One that you should know about is hemolysis. There's a nice picture somewhere in your textbook of a petri plate with blood auger. So I'll make some nice red blood auger if I can. What did she say? Come on, blood. He's talking about it now. Trying to make some blood auger here. Okay, and then I'm going to inoculate it, but to inoculate my plate, I'm just going to do some scans. Like normally we spread our bacteria with the loop, but sometimes, like with your NRO2, you have the little needle. You can actually do a stab. So you get your bacteria on a needle and you just stab the auger with it. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to stab the auger, and we're going to put one kind of streptococcus here, and we're going to put another kind of streptococcus here. And we're going to incubate it, and after a while, we're going to come back, and we're going to see that this colony has like a greenish ring around it. You know how when you get a bruise, you know it's because your blood vessel broke and blood leaked out, but it's not red anymore. It's like kind of bluish, greenish. So same thing here. If you get a green ring in your blood auger, that's because the bacteria in that colony have partially hemolyzed the red blood cells. Streptococcus bacteria that partially hemolyze red blood cells are called alpha, or alpha hemolysis is what they have. They have alpha hemolysis, or alpha hemolysis. <clears throat> this kind of streptococcus causes things like tooth abscesses. So streptococcus bacteria are the ones that are known for having hemolysis. This colony is a different strain of streptococcus, and it's going to make a clear ring because it has enzymes to totally hemolyze the red blood cells. So this is a complete hemolysis of the RBCs. And this would be called beta hemolytic streptococcus. This is much more virulent. This is going to cause things like purple fever. Remember childbirth fever that Semmel Weiss made us wash our hands about? Rheumatic fever, even scarlet fever, stuff like that. such as A and B. So you may hear the term strep A. You may hear the term strep B. Strep B was what killed my best friend's baby when it was still inside her. She was at the end of her second trimester. And strep B is streptococcus, produces a certain toxin. And back in those days, we didn't know any better what to do about it. She lost her baby. Nowadays, they have ways of preventing that from happening. 
But Lansfield is pretty old and dead by now. So this goes back a long ways. And that's what she was looking at, different antigenic features on the bacteria that she could use to identify them and then categorize them by the types of symptoms that they produce. <laughs> and some of them are alpha hemolytic and some of them are beta hemolytic, but it's the A and B aren't alpha and beta. That's two totally different things from the alpha and beta, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you are getting an opportunity or it comes up on the job, that's something you can research. It's Lansfield groups, what's the difference between Streptococcus A, group Streptococcus A, and group B Streptococcus. <laughs> That's an important thing to know clinically. And other enzymes. Some bacteria in particular produce coagulase enzymes. And a coagulase is actually like a clotting factor, coagulase. So this is like an enzyme that's a clotting factor that bacteria produce the enzyme to cause clotting around them to wall themselves off from your immune system. So this is an enzyme, another example of an enzyme. So it's not under perfect. The one enzyme is hemolysis enzymes or hemolysins. Another example is coagulases. And this is like a clotting factor produced by bacteria. So the bacteria make your body respond by walling them off. And that's to protect themselves against your immune system and your phagocytes. So your phagocytes can't get to them. Sticky infections typically produce coagulases. So coagulases are common in Staphylococcus bacteria. Because remember, those are sticky butters. They produce those coagulases. Would it get to the point where it causes hemorrhaging? No, not a hemorrhaging, but more like a, a clogging. So if you have, let's say you have an infection of Staphylococcus, it rolled itself off, uh, it's going to make like maybe a lump. Oh, just a little lump. Oh, or a big lump oh, a big inside lump. your body, and it's going to be rolled off. Yeah. And well, if, if a chunk anything. of it comes off and starts floating through your bloodstream, yeah. then you got an embolism or a thrombus or oh. a clot. Oh. A clot. Oh. It can clog your blood vessels. Yeah. Oh, see, sure. yeah. Another example of enzymes are kinases, which is similar and yet different. Uh, kinase enzymes are called spreading factor. Anybody ever have a carbuncle? <laughs> you heard that word in a long time. My stepfather had a pinochle group. They'd come over to the house one night a week and play pinochle on the dining room tables. And I used, to, I used to have to make cakes and stuff for them to eat while they were playing pinochle, which was cool. I actually, I don't like to cook, but I do like making cakes and stuff. So I'm good team recipes, of course. I don't make them anymore, because then I would eat them. And I had enough problems trying to keep the calories down. But if I make a cake, I will eat a cake. So. Especially the icing part. They had a party for somebody who was retiring or whatever, I don't know. And so they ordered this cake, I think it was from Sam's, and it had like this green icing. The decoration was green, like really dark green. And people called her up like two days later and said their poop oh was on green. Awkward. Awkward. Buying our green icing cakes, or blue for that matter. <laughs> <laughs> so 
here's another disgusting story. Who was it that said, I don't tell my sister? Who was that? Oh, yeah. Here's one. Don't tell my ex-roommate, my former roommate. My roommate was Jill Chester. Jill Susan Chester. She's my roommate for two years in college. She had a car bump. Like right here. You know where you, some, you, know, you shave your leg, but those leg hairs that are kind of pubic ish, it's almost like those wiry. <laughs> she, she shaved, and when you shave, you know, you cut the skin a little bit, especially around them coarse hairs, you know. So the Staphylococcus bacteria entered where she had scraped the hair follicle, entered the hair follicle. And what happens with a carbuncle is the zit grows in instead of like a zit comes out, you get a white head that comes out, a carbuncle is it grows in. And the reason it can do that, and then sometimes they have like these finger-like projections inside, so you have your initial infection, so like here's your skin, here's the coarse hair, and here's the hair follicle got irritated, so the bacteria entered. So you get like a, a zit here, but then because of kinases, it actually breaks down the fibrin, and so it can travel out, so you get like roots in that sucker. You know, that's a carbuncle. It's an innie zit rather than an outie zit. <laughs> yeah, and she had to have that sucker lanced. And then, yeah, they have to like try to cut around and get all pushed out. And, yeah, she, right there. Oh, that's sexy. We made a study. We also had two of them. She was always concerned by she had a little bit of dark hair that grew like right here on the top of her crack. She had a little she patch of dark hair. hair. <laughs> you kind of reminds me, remember the tail in that shallow <laughs> owl movie? Yeah. <laughs> well, she had a little tuft of fur back there. <laughs> 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 Anyway, so that's a carbuncle. So spreading factor. And that allows the zit to spread like underneath your skin into like different roots and not just stay in one lump but like spread different. And then there's another kind of spreading factor you'll have to look up in your book. Hyaluronidase is another type of a spreading factor.
every single week. Air Mac, regular Mac. Yeah. No, he's a grown man. He's a grown man. Oh, yeah, that's true. Big Mac. He has all the Macs. <laughs> Every birthday. I want to actually. We should study for the final, dude. What's the final? Just kidding. Just kidding. I know I saw that. You did? Yeah. You see this one? Look like at this one. This one's badass. You get the program with the bullet? Mm hmm. Massive bullet. Massive the, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, wobble? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Massive the bullet. Massive the block. That's what they told me. I don't it's like like Oh, I only have 10 minutes. That's the the velocity of the Yeah. Well, that 14? 14 This would be the Oh, really? Yeah. 14 That it gives up? Yeah. Oh, wow. You don't have to, I mean, worry about anything. 